Um, wake up, it's the Nolan Clark Night Show, starring Nolan, my usual Nolan's guest this week, Sebastian Thomas of the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Nolan. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Nolan Clark at Night Show, getting close to the season four finale. And this episode, folks, you know, it is a big deal for me since the beginning of the school year. I've been, I've been thinking of it, I've been wanting to do it. It's taken me a while, not with the person, but with another party that... I'm not going to, you know, gossip about to uh, try to get this down. Fortunately enough, this person was kind enough to take time out of their schedule and their season to do this. You may know him not as not just as a fellow Rhode Islander as myself or as a former Hendrickson Hawk, but he is currently a member of the URI men's basketball program. Sebastian, thank you for joining us today. No problem. Thank you for having me. Of course, as, as I like to do with my guests, I like to, you know, sort of catch up in life. And obviously, we're in a weird situation the last almost two years. And your situation is specifically at URI, at least for the team, has, you know, been somewhat, I'm sure, aggravation, but also frustration and confusion. You know, you supposed to have a game the other day, but luckily you, you have another game coming up uh, tomorrow. Um, How has it been for you the last two years, especially now that you're a college athlete before when you were just a high school athlete? Uh, it's, it's a lot different, you know, um, with all this COVID co- going around the past two years. Um, it's been a little hectic and stuff like that. Um, and I was just trying to figure it out at first, just like the rest of us. Um, but now – uh, I got used to it, and uh, now that I'm in college, uh, making sure I'm healthy and 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 safe uh, to be able to continue our season and just be there for my team. Now, as as I mentioned, uh, you know this has been going for two years, so not just people on your own team, but you know other college athletes around the country didn't get to experience necessarily a full season last year or maybe the year prior. Was, when it gets to two years, it'll be last year and the year prior. But for you, you're one of the, you're part of that group of athletes that although games have been postponed or canceled, there's sort of been a full season, you know, no strings attached. And like last year when there was no fans and the tournament wasn't on. So for you, what's that like to be part of that group where your some of your teammates didn't get to experience that last year? Uh, it's definitely a blessing because um, college basketball, you know, the fans play a big part of it and stuff like that. And um, I just wouldn't, couldn't imagine how it would be uh, this year if we had to play games with no fans, considering we've already played like 10 plus games with fans. So it's just a blessing to be able to have fans there and come out and support us each and every night. Well, I'm sure definitely for you, compared to other people who might have been, you know, a freshman on the team last year that didn't get to experience fans. Although they're used to having fans, I'm sure you're definitely used to having fans, but it definitely helps this year to have fans in the sense of next year, if this all goes away and then you're going back to playing with fans and that's something you have to adjust to. Then um, I'm curious in the sense of, uh, I've asked other people their relationship with, with a field they're known, whether it's coaches or media personnel or whatever it may be. And, but I'm curious on your relationship with basketball at this point compared to what it was like when you were growing up. Um, my relationship with basketball right now is, uh, probably at the highest level it's ever been. Um, just because, um, I'm, I'm in college now and the next level is professional, either NBA or overseas. So, um, at first when I was younger and stuff like that, I didn't take it as serious because I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up and stuff like that. I didn't know I could be something with the game of basketball, but, um, now that I'm in college, I've definitely taken it more serious. Um, and I'm just continue to put in the work and, and hopefully turns out the best for me. So, Well, I, I want to get to, you know, how it's been going so far for you and what's transpired as, you know, side stuff, including being a college athlete. So, and as I mentioned in the uh, intro that I gave, we're both Rhode Islanders. You're from Rhode Island, although you, you're a Hendrick and Hawk, although I'm a rebel. So my school has taken many of beatings, not just in basketball, but several other high school sports by um, yourself. Um, but for you, nonetheless, you know, you were a high school athlete. And in terms of experience growing up athletically at, at Hendrick in a school that's known for their success in that program what was that like to be part of that to then bring that to the next level of basketball later on uh Hendrickson, it, it's a great program um basketball and and outside of basketball you know it's like a very community like uh school everyone knows each other um 
But for the basketball standpoint, uh, really the coaching staff there at Hendrickson is a great, uh, I think, the best coaching staff in Rhode Island. Um, uh, those guys helped me a lot, you know, outside of basketball. They just taught me a lot of life lessons, and um, I, can, I carried them on to here at URI and stuff like that. So, Does that sort of situation – you know, give you the confidence and when not just as a success level, but what that culture brings to you to bring the confidence in order to, you know, know that you can go to the next level, whether it's prep or college. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and speaking of prep, you play that year in New York. I, I my athletic career is brief. I only, my level is rec basketball, three-time champion. Um, where I, I'm not successful with the three as much as I like to say, like yourself, um, but what was – describe to me that process when you're deciding to, you know, invest more time into your athletic career to go prep, whether it's in somewhat locally or, you know, in a whole other area of the country like New York. Um, so, really, my decision to go prep, uh, it wasn't really my decision, although it was my decision. But so basically, I had three years at Hendrickson uh, under my belt, and I was going to go into my senior year at Hendrickson. I wanted to go to Hendrickson for my last year. Um, but uh, things didn't end up working out in terms of like offers and interest and stuff like that. So um, I decided to to go to prep school for my last year just because it's better competition and stuff like that. Um, and then finally, um, that summer after I left the prep, I left the prep school early because of COVID and stuff like that. We didn't have too many games, so I left early. And then that summer, uh, that was my last year at AU. I, I got a, a offer from URI, and that was my dream school. So I just decided to commit right away. For for you and, and doing that prep stuff, obviously it's it's a different experience than going to high school and playing high school ball because I would think that the competition is extremely better in in terms of that you're playing kids and you know you're successful in that atmosphere. But I'm curious in the sense of playing in high school it's different year I, I think you know you're able to make more mistakes because I don't want to say it cost it doesn't cost as much as I'm sure it definitely has uh cost to that but you know compared to high college college you know you'd make more errors your time's gonna be taken away and it's gonna be given to other players I'm sure that experience is sort of at the same level maybe at the same level as prep but for that league is that an uh, experience where you sort of have to check your ego at the door because you're playing with kids who may be better than you and more talent um, for the prep level, uh, I wouldn't say like, I would have to check my ego. I mean, obviously the kids were a lot better, so I had to be on my A game almost every game, stuff like that. Um, but really for me, the thing that helps me is just being confident in myself and believing in myself, no matter the opponent. So, uh, even that's my motto, even when I came to URI and my first couple games here, um, I knew guys were going to be a lot stronger and bigger than me, but. I feel like uh, if you just believe in yourself, then you can do anything. When you when you when you were going through the process of schools and seeing what other schools were offering, besides obviously how close it was to you and you know maybe the the, the environment that you were taking from that school, what separated for you URI from the other programs, especially since URI the last few years the program had a lot of moving pieces around in terms of uh, personnel. Yeah. Uh, big thing for me was uh, the coaching staff. Um, they had a great, they, we, we built a great relationship uh, each and every one of the, co the coaching staff, everyone on the coaching staff. Um, they're very cool, funny. Um, they're very young too. So they can kind of relate to the kids on our team now. And that. But um, I knew that URI, uh, had a couple of, I wouldn't say bad years, but down years. Yeah. Um, and I really just wanted to uh, come around, come to the program and, and turn it around. Um, and just being from Rhode Island, I feel like I could uh, show the younger kids in Rhode Island that they, it's possibility that they can do this, the same thing as I'm doing. So was that, was that something that you thought in terms of maybe other places that you were looking at that you realized with URI that with the situation that they had experienced the last few years that you'd be able to get some playing time and, you know, provide valuable input in terms of the team success early on? Uh, this year? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't even supposed to play this year. So I was really supposed to sit out this year. I just ended up doing good in practice uh, before the season started. So 
uh, the coaching staff, uh, they came up to me and, and asked me if, if I wanted to play this year. And uh, that's how this kind of happened. So, well, that I, I want to, you know, bring that or talk about that briefly because I, in the previous question, I should have asked in the next year. But for that, I, I know, you know, reading through the articles on the news and whatnot this past summer, I'm sure definitely was a whirlwind of experiences and a roller coaster of stuff, not knowing what was going on. So, for you, you know, walk me through what that was like for you going from someone who, was you know playing prep league and then they were you know not sure about that and then they were going to UI thinking that they were sitting out the year being redshirted and then coming to then being able to play and you know p- provide some valuable minutes so far. Uh yeah, so basically, I uh, committed to URI I believe in August. Uh, so it was kind of uh, near the start of the school year. So um, on my visit. The coaches, they talked about uh, redshirting me with my parents and coming to school early instead of going uh, to do a postgrad year at another prep school. So we decided to do that. And then um, as the as the weeks went on and stuff like that, as we started to get practice, um, as we started to practice and stuff like that, uh, I ended up doing very well and stuff like that. I was uh, ahead of my time, to be honest, like I, I wasn't supposed to be doing that good or learning the game. The, at the college level this easy, I, w- I guess you would say. Um, but everything was starting to slow down for me. Um, and that's difficult because coming in as a freshman, uh, high school and, and college basketball are two different, yeah. two different <laughs> stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I, the game ended up slowing down for me. And um, I was kind of learning fast and I was excelling in practice and stuff like that. And um, so – the coaches came up to me, like, I would say for about, like, two to three straight weeks and stuff like that, and they were just telling me how I could make an impact on the team this year. And um, at first, I really wasn't uh, too big on it because I was a freshman. Um, yeah. And we have, we have a lot of veteran guards, um, and we have a lot of guards on this team. So I didn't think I was going to get too much playing time, so I was kind of looking at it as, like, a, a waste of a year if I just play yeah. and I get three minutes. Um but as the season went on and stuff like that, uh, I guess I gained the, the coach's trust and stuff like that. And um, I feel like now that we're in season, I feel like the minutes I'm getting, I feel like I'm producing it and helping the team win games. So well, I, a- I definitely, as a fan, and whether it's from a Rhode Island standpoint or a student standpoint, I, I definitely can tell that that's providing, you know, input and you hear, you know, when the people who were the, uh, not, I don't want to say PA, but when they're um, doing play-by-play for the game, I, I remember the previous game, um, uh, I, I'm drawing a blank, uh, AIC, I taken, you know, my dad and my grandfather, who both, both have spent the last many several years coaching sports, you know, they, I brought them to the game and they were, you know, very impressed on the ability and I'm sure for yourself growing this fast and providing this much of input this fast into your time here definitely speaks to the quality player you are but for you to be at this level and provide this much input this early on when you didn't think you were going to is it more of a mental approach where you have to mentally prepare yourself compared to physically although I'm sure physically you still have to be at a level to be able to compete no yeah uh I would say it's more of a mental mental thing um you know I feel like um the, the, the game of basketball is 90% mental and, and the other part is just ten, uh, the other 10% is just physical and stuff like that. But the game of basketball, you really have to think and stuff like that and use your brain. Um, and I feel like uh, mentally it can go two ways for you. Either you can check out of like be in a good mental space or you can check out mentally and um, uh, you don't really want to check out mentally during the season. because uh, That could cause you to have, couple bad games in a row or just just think about stuff and doubt yourself throughout the season so it's definitely a mental thing for me for you you know as as we said so far that the progress and success you've had you know you're not always going to be you know Kobe Bryant filling a stat sheet um every single game so for you this early on how do you you know have the patience for yourself and accept the fact that you know you might not necessarily always you know play phenomenal as you did maybe a game prior and you know trying to make sure you're staying positive with yourself throughout the season uh 
for me, I kind of figured it out. Like my role this year as a freshman coming in is not to be like the, the leading scorer or someone like that. Um, I feel like my game uh, is to make the game easier for my teammates, uh, create shots for my teammates, uh, bring a lot of energy on the floor on the offensive and defensive side. And um, really, I feel like the points and the stats are going to come uh, as the season goes on or even next season, if that's what it's going to take uh, just for us to win as a team. Um, but I'm willing to do anything um, on the court for my team to, to have a winning record and stuff like that. So speaking of winning record, your team, you know, has a winning record, which is, you know, very good. And you have the game coming up. Um, how do you, uh, although, you know, there's been a lot of COVID postponements and cancellations and rescheduling for the A-10. For you, from your viewpoint, how do you assess the team so far and the success they've had? Uh, I feel like we're at a great point in the season. I think we're, I believe we're 10 and three right now. Um, I do feel like a couple of our losses we shouldn't have lost, um, but that's okay. Um, it's good to lose in the early season instead of losing late in the season. Yeah. But um, and we can learn from those losses. So, but I feel like going into conference play, I feel really good. Um, there's a lot of uh, what was I trying? To, there's a lot of um, good teams in the in the A10 and stuff like that. Um, I don't know right now what we're ranked, but um, I feel like going into conference play, we have to be more locked in than ever um, just because it gets tougher when uh, conference time comes around. So we have to be locked in. So those early, those, the early losses that you, that the team um, suffered early in the season for you to come from an experience like the prep league or high school where you might not necessarily have law, uh, lost as, I don't want to say lost as much as so I'm sure you lost a, more, more than your fair share of games. But for you to experience those early on as a college athlete, definitely I'm sure gave you the mindset or gave you some sort of viewpoint on college athletics. So how did you experience those losses early on as a new college athlete? Uh, really for me, the losses, I feel like the losses that we took, uh, there was a lesson that came out of every, every uh, loss that we took this year. Um, I feel like, to be honest, we're a good enough team um, to, to potentially win the A-10 and stuff like that. But I feel like, the way we beat ourselves is not really the other team beating us, uh, even though that's what the uh, score shows, but us just turning the ball over little mistakes that we can control and stuff like that. So if we control the controllables, then I feel like we have a great chance to, uh, to win the A-10 this year. For you, you just sort of mentioned how, you know, it's been, and I agree with it, and I would think your coaches would as well and anyone else who is logical in any sense. Um, talked about how, you know, it's better off to lose early in the season compared to later in the season when it comes to conference play. How much of that game is important? How much of that part of the season, the conference play later on, is important for you to make sure that you're competing at a level that you should be competing at in order to, you know, help the team win? Uh, conference play, going into conference play, it's big for, for every college team, you know, um, Teams when teams in your conference they get they know you uh, more than the other teams that we played before on the non conference games just because sometimes you may play a team twice and over the years they recognize what you're trying to do and and, and your team and stuff like that so um, we uh, we just got to be locked in and stuff like that and um, hopefully we're playing our best basketball during conference play to to put us in the best situation to uh, win the A ten and make March Madness. For you, and I, I saw this, like, I'm trying to think where it was. It might have been in the Providence Journal when you, you know, were first jo officially joined the team and before school started or NBC10 or WPRI, whatever it was, website where they had talked about the narrative of you being the first in-state scholarship recruit um, since Mount Hope's uh, Steve Mello. You know, Billy Barron had, you know, a few kids, uh, two sons who went here, but for you, and you sort of mentioned that earlier, setting a role model or being a role model for um, in-state kids to, you know, shoot for the dreams and possibly do this. For you to accomplish that and be the first in a while to be an in-state person to get a scholarship to come to URI must be a, a big deal and help you through the year. But what's that like for you? What's that been like for you to, you know, sort of maybe think that, that you're that person? Uh, you know, it's just a blessing uh, to be here and um, to be able to have the abilities that I have. Uh, and that was really one of the big reasons why I committed to URI. Um, um, because growing up, 
I didn't, I seen, uh, well, I've seen David Duke. He went to Providence. Obviously, yeah. it's not all right, but um, he was one of the guys to, to go to uh, be from Providence and go to a school in state and stuff like that. And um, really, I just I kind of followed his footsteps, I guess you could say, but just a different different school yeah. and stuff. Um, but it's just great um, just to see because I know the game of basketball is bigger than me. And one day I'm going to put it down. So for me to just be able to be a role model for the younger kids and the younger generation come uh, kids in Rhode Island and growing up and hopefully seeing them uh, chase their dreams and, and, and hopefully they get the opportunity to do the same thing as I'm doing. Uh, it'll just be great to see. So hopefully I, they look at me as a role model and uh, hopefully I can uh, show them the way. Um, for, for you being this, you know, your first year, coach Bozeman, this is his first year as well. I had, when I had asked TJ about him and what it's been like coaching with him and what it's like different than him than um, Coach Carroll's father when he was uh, on the coaching staff. But for you, since you're both in your first year as part of this program, what's it been like for you? Is, is he someone that you have a, a close relationship since you're both in your first year? Um, yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, he he's kind of a little different from the other coaches on the staff, considering he's a lot older and stuff like that. Um, he actually did attend a uh, URI yeah. whenever his years were a long time ago and stuff like that. Uh, but he has great knowledge of the game of basketball and um, the people he's worked with over the years, uh, like when he was coaching and stuff like that is uh, just learning from that, learning from him, what they, what they talked about. Like, I believe he coached Jason Kidd and stuff like that, who was a great point guard in the NBA and in college. And um, really just I'm just trying to continue our relationship just to learn anything I can from him to be the best me. So you had talked about, well, um, I'm sure it'll pay off dividends um, for you. You had mentioned that, you know, think uh, about winning the A-10. Is that where you see the team at the end of the season come um, come conference play winning the A-10? Uh, yeah, definitely. I feel like uh, if we do the things that we have to do, um, I feel like we we are the best team in the A10. I feel like we are talented enough to to win the A10. So yeah, that's what I see for our team this in, year. In order to do that, how 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 much do you have to raise your game in order to compete at that level and make sure that that's where you end up at the end of the season? Uh, we have to raise our 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 level of play a lot. Um, uh, as you can see in the AIC game or a couple of previous games this year. You know, sometimes we start the game off flat and uh, that really just can't happen um, in, in, in conference play. And if we want to be the best team we can be, um, uh, we got to control our turnovers and, and we have to play defense at a very high level like we were in the beginning of the year. And now I'll, I'll go to the segment I like to call the one more challenge. So for those out there who don't know what is the one more challenge is where I throw out a few names and places and topics and whatnot to my guests and they have to do their best ability to say what comes to mind when they hear it. So Sebastian, are you ready? Yep. Okay. So I'll start. Uh, Providence. <laughs> Friars. How do... Friars. Come on. Um, <laughs> no, uh, Hendrickson. Uh, basketball. Upstate New Wait, York. No, right. I'm supposed to be naming just a word. Yeah. Whatever, comes... whatever comes to your mind when you hear whatever I say. All right. One word, right? Yeah, it can be one word or it can be two, whatever. It's not a... Uh... All right. Uh, upstate New York. Terrible. <laughs> uh, Jamal Gomes. Uh, Goat. A-10 basketball. Exciting. And last but still not least, Sebastian Thomas. <laughs> uh, uh, a Goat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sir, I'd like to thank you tremendously, a large amount for doing this. It means a lot. I know your schedule, your season is busy and you're traveling and all that stuff. So it means a lot to take the time out to do it with me this morning. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. Of course. Well, and as I said in the intro, this has <laughs> been something that I, I've been looking forward to and wanting to do for a few months. And uh, you have to work through the proper channels. And sometimes those don't work <laughs> out or they're not always as uh I don't want to say helpful, but hand in hand with you. So I appreciate your willingness and your openness when I send out that uh, feeler message. Um, as I usually do, I like to give this time to play anything. So if there's anything you'd like to promote or put out there, you certainly have the time to do so. Uh, no, I'm good. Just uh, thank you for having me. Appreciate you. It was a great podcast. Well, for all those out there that 
haven't done so already and you enjoy this episode because i'm sure you're gonna enjoy the hell out of this one do us a favor subscribe follow on your audio and visual platforms like share comment and turn on post notifications so you are know when other episodes just like this one with the legendary sebastian thomas because believe me down the t- next year even by the end of this year next year the year after by senior year he's gonna be a household name you're gonna love him his game is very good so do all those things so you update more episodes because down the road 10 years from now when you look back and say holy this one was amazing with Sebastian. So subscribe, share all that fun jazz and follow on Instagram, the Nolan Cart Night Show and on Twitter, Nolan Cart Night and the words of Johnny Carson. I bid you a heartfelt night till we see each other again.